let's quickly go through the process of uploading one piece. Again, that piece that's pictured below me. You're going to click on Cell, and you're going to be on Cell Item, click Parts, click Submit. Now, uh, if you already have it in your store, you could go into your inventory, find it, and adjust that number. But I would strongly suggest doing it this way, and that's just my two cents. Okay, part number. We already know the part number. We can click View Image. We know it's going to be white. I'm using a Mac, so it's got maybe a different scroll scene, scroll uh, image than if you're using a PC. And let's say we want a new remark, and we are going to upload one, and it's going to be ten cents. All right, it's a new piece. You can retain it if you want. You can put it on an automatic sale if you want. You can choose those tiered pricings, which we talked about before. We're not gonna do any of those complicated things. We're just gonna hit review item. Okay, it's showing. This is my new piece with a new remark and it's gonna be 10 cents. It says this item's already in your inventory. You have five of them for a specific price. Now I can list this as a new lot or I can adjust the quantity and now have them combined, consolidated into one lot with a total of six. If I do this, I can keep it with the old pricing or I can change it to the new pricing and change all of these options. Now tomorrow when I'm showing you Brick Store, you'll see how you can actually combine the remarks. It's pretty cool. One more quick note here is that you can actually edit your default options. So if you always wanted to go to the new price or always the new remarks, you can have those as your default options. It saves you a little bit of time each and every time. One more quick note on determining what price you should set something as if you're uploading one at a time. Well, you want to go check the price guide. So again, that piece below me, we're going to click on parts. Again, we're in catalog. We're going to click on parts. We're going, and it's a plate, so we're going to go to plate. If you already know the number, just go ahead and type that in. And then you want to choose the specific color. Again, this is just a default color. Don't be fooled by what color this item is. It's just a default color. We're going to click on white. It's going to show us the average price. It's rounding to the penny, so the average price is nine cents. If you want to use quantity average, that's six cents. Finally, today I'm going to show you how to part out a set. I'll do it as quickly as I can. Let's pretend that we just bought the Parisian restaurant and we want to part it out. We don't go from sell item. That's only if we wanted to sell the set as a whole. Just to the right of that, we want to click Part Set. We're going to type in the set number. I already know it's 102.43. We want to include all the extra parts. I'm not going to include the box, but I am going to include the instructions. I have just one of them. Parts and minifigures whole, or you can part out the minifigures and sell the torso separately from the legs. I'm going to have it as new, and I can either enter my own prices if you want to go through one by one each and every piece, or you can simply go last six months sales average, and you can round to two or three decimals. Default quantity again is set to one. Choose retain, you can set base pricing, and consolidate. I would recommend again, consolidating all of your lots. You can click and go to the new price. Let's hit submit for edit. For a bigger set, this may take a little more time. For this Parisian restaurant, there are quite a few lots. Now when you're going through this, it's going to show you this average price for each and every piece. And then it's also going to have a few pieces that say Lego might have included extra parts. Now this number 12 for this black bar is including the extra parts. Now anytime you have this, you want to be counting all of those items that you receive from the set to make sure you actually have 12. As we go down here, I've got everything sorted by color, then item name, and it's a long ways to the bottom. Let's go ahead and scroll all the way down. Now the very, uh, very bottom, it's going to have alternates. Now these are probably the most important things you want to check for. For instance, in this set, there's two different alternates. One of them is that black bracket. Some of them have rounded corners, some of them don't. So you need to ch check each and every piece. Don't check just one. A lot of times there can be um, one of each in a set. Especially if you're parting out multiple sets. You might have one set that has all rounded corners, the other set has all 
of the regular corners. It's going to show you the instructions. It's going to show you the minifigs. And again, you chose whole minifigs, so you're selling each minifig as a whole. If a part has not been sold in the last six months, then there's going to be no price. You're going to have to enter that on your own. Okay, now we've got all of our items in 374 lots. We're going to click verify items. It's going to take us to this last stage where you're no longer going to be able to uh, modify the comments, the remarks, uh, or the prices. And it's also going to show you how many dollars worth you're going to be uploading this set for. Okay, so that took a minute to uh, verify. Now, a good thing you're going to want to see here is the orange or yellowish color where it says consolidated. That means that you already have that first item, that black antenna, so it's consolidating into one lot. Very good. Instead of just three, now you have 11 and you chose to use the new price, so it's using the price that you selected right there. It's going to show you each and every item that consolidates, and as you go to the very bottom, it's now going to show you your items, lots, and your do dollar total that you're uploading this set for. Depending on how you organize your inventory, you may have remarks for each and every item that tell you where your inventory is stored, whether it's a drawer or a container. For these new items, they're not going to have remarks, so you're going to have to put in new remarks, and when you're uploading them now, that's going to be the best time to do so. Now you can see for my store, they're consolidating, but there's no remarks. That's because I don't have any. But you, if you already have remarks, should have it listed right there. It's going to tell you where to put that item. For all of these that are new and they are not consolidating, you're going to have to go backwards and change the remarks in that last step. So back there we go. You're going to say, hey, this is in... Oh, it's going a little slow on me. You're going to type in, hey, this is in drawer number um, 489 or wherever you're going to put it. So once again, I clicked to verify the inventory and now it is pulled through the new remark and it's going to show up right there, 489. So this again is the best time to do that. All, again, all you got to do is click back to go to the last page, verify again and you're gonna come here and now you can upload your items. I don't actually have this set to part out, so I'm not gonna do that. But hopefully that answered quite a few of your questions. And if you have any more, please let me know again tomorrow. We're gonna to be working on Brick Store. So in the meantime, thank you very much for watching today. Thank you to all of my subscribers. And guys, again, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help you out. See ya.